Hi folks, Irish Trekkie back with another Star Trek The Official Starships Collection Model Review. Issue 46, we finally have another Enterprise to add to the collection. The USS Enterprise NCC-1701C. And as you can see, she is freaking massive. It's not a special, it's just a really big ship. Looks awesome. Um, I know this has been sought after by a lot of people since the collection started, but I don't think you'll be disappointed. Uh, but let's put the big, massive, massive ship to one side and let's have a look at the magazine. And we have a glorious, I think a truly glorious uh, CGI shot there off the magazine itself, front cover. So let's have a look inside. Okay, we have... The USS Ambassador, not Ambassador, USS Enterprise Ambassador class, launched 2332, length 520 meters, so she's no slouch, and top speed of warp 8.4. So, um, again, just by the general feel, we still have a nice glossy page, but it still looks like they've kind of lessened the grade of the magazines ever so slightly, but it's still good quality. Um, but anyway, no said about that. We have our four traditional sections here, a profile of the Enterprise, designing the ship, the making of yesterday's Enterprise, epic, epic, and on-screen appearances, with our little how to mount and some key specifications. So we have our registry, we knew that, uh, constructed Earth Station McKinley, um, destroyed 2344 uh, Narada 3, length 522 meters, decks 36, Weaponry, Type 7 phasers and photon torpedoes, and Captain Rachel Garrett. And some nice close-up shots there. What a meaty deflector dish we have there. <laughs> Ooh, isn't that tasty? That's really cool. Okay, so what do we have? Well, Enterprise C was designed for exploration and spent much of its operational life charting stellar phenomena. Mmm. Earned a place in history when it was lost defending the Klingon outpost. Very pivotal, very pivotal in the Klingon and Federation history. Uh, we have a nice shot there off the ventral section. We have our phaser banks, or galaxy class type windows, and that we all were very familiar with. Uh, more of a circular drive versus that kind of oval um, galaxy class as well. And very angular um, pylons as well. But uh, yeah, I'm going to leave a lot of the meaty stuff to you guys to read through your magazines. I don't want to spoil. Okay, we have a whole host, a whole plethora of imagery here, especially from yesterday's Enterprise. Pretty beaten up. Um, NCC-1701C. Uh, poor Rachel. Uh, here we have Richard T Castillo and the EXO. Uh, good old Tasha from the alternate timeline. What do you think about the garb here, the belts? It was very... Um, it was very alternate timeline, I thought, anyway, but no moustaches. I thought everyone should have had, had a moustache, just for a laugh. Um, what do we have? Data feed. Captain Rachel Garrett spent 12 years commanding the Enterprise C. She took command in, the late, in late 2332 when she was promoted to captain after a well-regarded tour of, as a first officer of the USS Hood. Ooh, the Hood. That's a familiar name. She spent the first six months of her command surveying, um, supervising final testing of her new ship before it was commissioned and assigned to an ongoing mission of deep space exploration. She died in an alternate future when the Enterprise C was propelled to the year 2366 and attacked by Klingons. Before her death, she had decided to return. Uh, what is it? She had decided to return to certain death in her own time. Okay, all right, okay, so yes, she decided to go back to her own time where she knew she was going to get killed. Hoping that her crew sacrifice would help to avert the war. So that was fairly noble. Um, do, 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 anything else really saucy here? By 2366, the Federation was losing the war uh, with the Klingons and Picard expected Starfleet to surrender within six months. Wow. Interesting. Ooh, here we have our ship profile plan view. So, anything interesting here. So, we have our warp core injection hatch. Very familiar. Um, a really old school shuttle bay. Sensor dome. Type 7 strips. Main bridge. 
um, impulse do, 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 against sensor dome. Where are the torpedoes? Will the torpedoes be up here? I don't see them anywhere here. Where would the torpedoes be? You would think that they'd be here, but they might be up here as well. I don't know. I'm not saying that there anyway. Um, do, 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 do. What do we have here? Fighting vessels. Although primarily designed for exploration, ambassador class ships fought in the Dominion War and helped establish the barricade that rest, uh, restricted Romulan involvement in the Klingon Civil War as well. Mm. When the Enterprise C returned to her own time, her systems had been repaired, but only to the standards of her own time. She did, however, have the advantage of Tasha Yar's tactical experience. Mm. So, we get to the meat and veggie bit, guys. Designing the Enterprise C. Um, but the, what do we see here? Enterprise C was the first Enterprise that was designed in a hurry for a single episode of television, but it still took years. When it appeared in yesterday's Enterprise, the Enterprise C was given cosmetic damage. The model was eventually redressed as the USS Zukov and given a, and give a repaint. <laughs> I would assume that's given a repaint so the damage was repaired. Man, can people like spell check these guys? I think they should outsource quality control to the community because we always kind of pick up uh, on these. Um, do, 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 do. That's really nice. That's very hybridy to the galaxy just with that drive section there. Um, Andy Probert produced the drawings showing what the Enterprise C might look like long before the ship appeared on screen. The only part of the design that was left in the art department was a three-quarter sketch, which left a lot of unanswered questions. Hmm. Is that the sketch that they're talking about? I don't think so. Okay. So then Rick took over. Uh, Rick Sternback produced his own version of the Enterprise C, working from a profile model uh, off the ship that appeared in the Enterprise D's conference lounge and Probert's original sketch. And the final profile that Sternbeck sent over to model maker Greg pulled the design a little closer to Kirk's Enterprise and a little further away. So we had the kind of more angular um, uh, pylons with the kind of straighter cut off here and circular uh, saucer section. Or not saucer section, circular deflector dish as well. But there's a whole lot of goodies in here that I won't spoil. Okay, the making of yesterday's Enterprise. We learn that without the Enterprise C sacrifice, the Federation would have become a military organization fighting a losing war with the Klingons. So that one battle and that one sacrifice did shape the future uh, for the Federation, which is crazy. And the story of yesterday's Enterprise started with Christopher Trent Ganiano. Ganino, is it? <laughs> uh, when Michael Piller asked him to incorporate Whoopi Goldberg's Guinan and Tasha Yar, he collabor collaborated with his friend Eric Stilwell. That's cool. Okay, back from the dead. Uh, so it was so cool to kind of see Tasha back. Has to be done. Rachel Garrett was the first female captain of the Enterprise. Uh, it was the first draft of the script. She was a man called Richard. But Pillar asked for a change so that it felt natural for Tasha to take her place in history. Interesting. Wow, there's a whole lot on this. Okay. The story was designed to give Tasha the send-off that Pillar felt was missing. Yeah, it was so her demise uh, against that monster was just ridiculous. Um, even along with the romance. Two years later, the writing decided that she had actually survived and had been captured by the Romulans. Indeed, that is indeed what happened. And on screen appearances, obviously yesterday's Enterprise. Uh, no movie, um, other appearances, none. And uh, that is off the Enterprise. And uh, again, some trivia. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Pillar's original notes on the script suggest that Wesley's father, Jack Crusher, might also have been uh, recorded, uh, restored to life by the changes in the timeline. Ooh, interesting. Saucy. And here we have a peek of what's coming next. The Nagvar. And um, pictures are getting better. Uh, Colouring looks very good on those. So I'm looking forward to Gauron's massive flagship. Uh, so stay tuned for that in an upcoming review. Uh, but let's put this magazine to one side and let's have a look at the model in question. Here we go. Isn't she glorious? Even just from the packaging, she's glorious. Now I've had a quick 
peek of this because I got it yesterday, but I wasn't in a position to review her. And there's a couple of flaming errors on this. Oh. For her size, she's actually quite light. Let's just put that to one side. Okay. Now, I think her colouring is fantastic. But let's just get the flaws out of the way so we can talk about the goodness. Anything missing? Yeah. Impulse. Where is the impulse engine? All we have is a pretty obvious scene here, which is quite... You know, it's covered by, for me, an offset paint job, uh, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, but there is no deflector, or not, no, no impulse section at all. Um, so, tut tut, tut tut. And um, the sensor dome should be white as well. Um, it still looks very good, but it should be white as well. Um, there's a couple of other things as well. Um, transport emitters are missing but overall she's a very nice model for those who are interested dish is metal dry section and everything else is plastic but uh, let's get up close and personal with the sea and have a look at her glory oh yeah and I have a little bit of um, fluff on the side I don't know if that would kind of file off or would I expose maybe an undercoat or something like that but no biggie I'd probably just display her like that um, but there hasn't really been any other errors I bar a little bit of paint offset but you're going to have those in these models anyway but uh let's have a quick and closer look at the ship not a quick one let's have a thorough up close and personal look so um as you can see the paint is very very vibrant uh, we have a whole plethora of windows and the overall molding of the ship is really really nice and the paint application i think is very good as well so we have our maneuver and thruster zones there very vibrant on the sides with our kind of two-tone well, would that be duck egg blue, possibly in kind of battleship grey, maybe kind of a few tones lighter than that, um, for the paint scheme. The insignia and decals, nice and crisp. We have that kind of red uh, edging uh, that we are familiar with, with like the original, um, well, the Enterprise refit, refit and a couple of other era ships like that. But uh, USS Enterprise is nice and straight and true, and those windows look spectacular up here as well and um, the life pods stand out very nice as well and the phaser banks are all painted really well here for me and um, we have our insignia uh, on the dorsal I always, I always have to think about that on the dorsal side of the nacelles slight I, I, I want to say a slight kind of misshaping of the red I think it should be a little bit higher to not have that white I could be wrong on that though and then we have our two lines. Again, they're applied very well and kind of very unique. Not unique, but very symmetrical, I mean. We have some very intricate uh, red paint in here with a lot of kind of pinstriping along the nacelles, which is really good. Um, insignia on the actual nacelles, if I can just get in focus. Uh, USS Federation of Planets, spelled right, indeed. And even on the pylons there as well. And we have nice plastic. I love it. I love the Perspex. Not the Perspex. Just the, the plastic that the light can capture through on these guys. And I think it does a very good job on it. The shuttle bay is quite subtle in there. Because it's there's no difference in paint job. Which I think there... I, actually, I don't think there should be. Let me just check. I'm um, just having a quick look at the magazine. No, it, it should be... Uh, yeah, it's kind of the same picture of the paint as the body, but there is this kind of pad. Again, slightly offset, but no biggie. Um, we have good moulding on the pylons here as well. And overall, I think those nacelles look really, really nice. And that kind of gold colour just stands out really well on it. There is that little bit of kind of mould, kind of extra that just wasn't filed off before paint. Paint app. Um, here's the drive section. If I can get any closer, uh, you, what is it, Starship US Enterprise, yeah, it's all there, um, as you can see, my windows are offset, um, I said this before, if they can't really get the quality on those, they might as well just not have them in the mould, so you wouldn't notice any difference really, because you can see where the windows should be, versus where the paint's actually been applied, 
So it's best off just to have a kind of like a blank body if you're going to put the windows in like that because uh, you'll get away with a lot more on it. Um, again, our insignia, a uh, bit of a seam line there, but nothing too crazy. Uh, but really, really nice so far. Up close and personal with the sensor dome. Quite detailed, um, but again, should be white. Our registry there is nice and clean. Overall paint job on the ventral section is really nice as well. So we have those two tones. So there's no as teching on this, but there wasn't any on the TV show as far as I remember. Just this kind of two-tone paint job. And my phaser bars are nice and crisp on there as well. So overall, I would really, really give this a thumbs up. And it's freaking huge. It truly, truly is huge. Um, but that's a really, really nice model, guys. And I think she captures very well against the light there. Um, actually, I never looked at the neck. It looks pretty decent. Um, again, slight offset in paint there, but that's very intricate anyway. Uh, you can kind of see it there. It goes almost up to the top. And again, the windows are offset on the neck of it as well. Ooh, and my deflector dish. Forgot about that. What an epic deflector dish. Again, plastic, nicely done. Um, nice profile on the ship. And um, I think that's going to sit very, very nicely in your collection, guys. But I just can't get over the size of it, you know. It tends to be like the the stubbier the ship, the more that they can fit in the packaging. Because the packaging is pretty much, I think they're like limited to the box size. Uh, because obviously like the Enterprise E and the Excelsior are so long. Um, it makes them very small scale then. And when you see something like this. And the Enterprise D, again, she was wide. She wasn't the longest ship in the world, but she was very wide to begin with that oval saucer. And we got a lot of bang in the box for that. But I could be wrong. Um, interested to see what feedback that would be. But um, yeah, I am very happy with my latest Enterprise. So that just leaves us with the old lady herself, which will be on issue 50. And then we have the Enterprise A. And we'll also be getting the Mirror Universe Enterprise. And we'll be getting the Enterprise Refit. And the Enterprise J. Will we be getting the Enterprise F? Hmm. Get signed in the petition, guys. <laughs> That's going to be a lot of Enterprises for us. But um, let's see what she looks like on the stand. And let's compare her then to another ship on the line. There she sits on the stand. Really nice. Uh, very elevated uh, towards the front. Uh, so you're going to see that mighty deflector dish as well. And she sits really well as it's clipping on to the saucer section, which we'd all be familiar with at this stage. Um, but yeah, really cool and really stable. So let's compare her to another ship in the line. So here we have the Enterprise C up close and super personal. And let's compare her to another ship or ships in the line. So as you can see, all the Enterprises so far, we have the Refit, we have the B, the C, the NX, the D, the E, and the All Good Things D as well. So you can just see scale comparison here. Um, she stands very nicely against the Enterprise D there and the very impressive NX-01. You can just see the kind of difference in scale between the E's and the B's there. Again, very long ships, so they couldn't get quite big unless the box is really enlarged on that but i'm very happy with that shit there sitting opposite the plank the plank what was i saying <laughs> the plaque i can't even talk right now but um yeah guys this is a must if you're getting them one by one um otherwise if you're a subscriber this is something to look forward to if you're in canada america germany australia i know there's a bit of a wait but um, it'll be worth it, guys. And that concludes my review, issue 46, of Rachel Gart's USS Enterprise NCC 1701C Ambassador Class. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, why not throw a like and subscribe my way, as in your support is what keeps the channel running. And if you have any thoughts or opinions, just leave them in the comment section below. And just jump over to Facebook, Twitter and Instagram just to say hi. And if you want to support the channel, uh, check out my GoFundMe link in the description below as well. Um, again, that every little helps there. But I've been Irish Trekkie, and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy. Bye-bye.